Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning to Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It is great to have you tuning in. And we've got an interesting passage of scripture to look at today in Matthew chapter 15. I'm excited about this because I think there's so much in this passage that maybe uh, if you haven't looked into this, if you've never heard a sermon on this or dove into what's going on here, maybe you go, man, it really doesn't make sense to me. I'm just going to move on. Uh, and so I'm excited to kind of camp out here for a bit and take a look at this because we've got a, a, an event with Jesus and, and an individual and their interaction shows us that our faith in Jesus is so much more important than our background, what our life looks like, what appearances are, or even what our heritage and, and, and kind of history of our life is. And the faith uh, that we have in Jesus can be so powerful. So let's take a look at this. We're going to kind of work our way through, we'll pause at a few points, and kind of unpack what this passage means. So uh, Matthew chapter 15, starting verse 21, if you want to follow along, you can do that, or you can just listen, because that's what I'm here for. Starting verse 21, it says this, Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he didn't answer her a word. And the disciples came and begged him, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And Jesus answered, It's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. I'm going to pause there. We've got a few more of your verses to read. But already you probably have some questions. Like, why is Jesus referring to her as a dog? Why isn't he responding and helping her? Is Jesus a jerk? No, he's not. Wait, let's unpack this for a little bit. So it says that she's a Canaanite woman. So there's, a, there's a, a gentle way of presenting here that she's not a Jew and likely not from a lineage of faith. Uh, right off the bat, we understand if she's not a Jew, she's not what is considered a God-fearing, God-seeking individual and does not come from a family that does this. In that day, there was this great divide between the Jews and the Gentiles, the, essentially the believers and the non-believers. And, and so there's a tension there that is pre-existing before Jesus. But more than that, what we understand as we work through the Gospels, and Jesus even alludes to it in a passing comment here, that, that the purpose that God had instilled in Christ for his earthly ministry here was primarily to reach and communicate with and teach and challenge the, the Jewish people, the house of Israel, he says, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to challenge them. Now, we understand uh, because it, you likely, like me, are not of Jewish descent, and yet here we are as God-fearing and Jesus-following individuals. Well, as we read the book of uh, Acts, we see that God's plan was for the Gentile people to be reached through the disciples following Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. That's part of God's plan. Now, why he did that is a, a video for another day, but Jesus is trying to stay on his God-given task here. His task was to teach, challenge, rebuke, and focus on the people of Israel, the Jewish people. And and he's got a potential distraction here. Someone who's outside of that purpose saying, help me heal my daughter, give ministry to me, give time and energy to me. Now, the statement that comes next is maybe what gets your attention where he says, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Why on earth would Jesus say something like that? Well, two reasons. One, he's tapping into a pre-existing cultural uh, trend where Jewish people would refer to Gentiles as dogs. They liked each other, apparently they didn't. Um, so he's tapping into that. But the why I think is really important. It's not so that he can just be a jerk like all these Jewish people, but he's doing that to press her faith, to, to challenge her and to see does she, how does she respond? Where is her faith at? And we're gonna see, let's keep reading because the rest of the story is pretty great. Verse 27, the woman answers, she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Now, this is, this is incredible because the woman goes, Yeah, you're right. I am not, I am not sitting at the table of the house of Israel. I'm not in that 
but she goes, yet yeah, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the table. She, she's essentially saying, God, if I can just have some morsels of your blessing, some crumbs of your goodness that overflow from your purpose, it will be enough for me. And that's exactly what happens. He sees this woman's faith, he sees her response, and he responds with that as well. So my question for you today is, is to ask, one, where are you in your faith? Do you have that faith that Jesus can show up in your life and can do drastic things and help you? He's not just someone to make you feel good on the good days and give you some, you know, little inspiration for your, your morning as you watch a video on the internet. But, but God is real and active. He can change our life. He can, he can work to change our mindset, to oftentimes even change our circumstances. But if he doesn't change our circumstances, he can change what those do in our life. Do you believe that? And are you willing to be in a place of just asking for some crumbs? See, I think sometimes those of us who follow Jesus want, want the main course. We go, hey, God, I'm going to pray for this thing. I'm going to pray for it. And I want you to show up with the main course. We, you know, Thanksgiving was recent. We want, the, we want the turkey and the stuffing and the yams and the mashed potatoes. We want all the things. We want God to, to do all of this. And that this woman was in a place of humility going, God, you don't owe me anything, but I know that if I can just get some morsels of your goodness, of your power in my life, it will change everything for me. And it did. And I wonder if we were to take that same posture of humility saying, hey, God, you are the God of the universe. You've already given me so much more than I deserve through salvation in your son, Jesus, because I was a sinner who rebelled against you. But God, I just want a little crumb of blessing in this area of my life. Would you be so kind as to do that? And if we believe that just a little sprinkling of his power in our life would change our situation and circumstances, I think he'd meet us where we're at in our faith. And we'd be able to see him change our, our, our situation and give us peace and hope where life seems difficult. To, to change our outlook and be able to see with his eyes and his perspective. To be able to, to, to maybe even experience healing and a miracle like this woman did for her daughter. But it comes back to where's our faith and are we willing to trust in his power to show up in our life? My prayer is that you would be in that place and you would see God at work as you seek him. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.